G'day YouTube, Warbles on a lot here. What I'm showing you are the two correct answers in what purports to be a very simplified engineering flowchart wherein if something is supposed to move and it does not move, you take to it with WD-40 and you lubricate it. If it's uh, not supposed to move and it does move, you stick it together with duct tape. There are people who like to think that that's hillbilly engineering. I'd like to show you that hillbilly engineering can go a little bit deeper than that because today we're going to look at how to weld two bits of wood together with tie wire. Now because this is a fairly elegant style of a wood welding repair, I've actually uh, I've employed two different sizes of tie wire. The big heavy duty stuff, that's a double strand of coat hanger wire. The vertical serving across the splice is tie wire from the hardware shop. Then we have another double strand of coat hanger wire at the butt joint at the end of the splice. I won't pretend that all the joinery was as good as it should have been. That number two beam came out looking pretty rough, so rough I had to chock it out with a piece of wood at one end, but yeah, such is life. It's not something I've ever tried to do before, and the first time you try to do something, you're allowed to get it wrong. Second time it should work. Third time it should be better than what you can buy. Well, pretty sure you can't buy splice repairs on a gate. You've got to do it yourself. Now the funny thing is that because this whole gate has been out here in the weather for... Well, I really don't know. It, it's been here a lot longer than 50 years. It might have been here for 100 years. It could have been here for 120 years. I would say that the join, even with the horrible joinery, is going to be likely to be stronger than the original wood. So it's an effective repair. So yeah, that's how to weld wood together with tie wire and a Cobb & Co hitch. As you can see, as it was predicted within the prophecy, the back slab cut beam that I'm using for a diagonal stay has already commenced to crack as the wood that's in it shrinks along the radial growth rings of the circumferential growth rings, thus causing the radial cracks. Whereas the wood which was quarter cut milled, albeit done with a chainsaw, it has not cracked. which is why it's worthwhile putting in the extra effort, even though you get slightly smaller wood. So there you go, and now you know. That's how hillbilly wood welding is done. Warbles on a lot to YouTube. Ciao.